Karma came back like a boomerang because Jojo Siwa's introduction to the music world did not go as she hoped. Oh no Siwa, you may not be the shit, but at least you're the fart. Nah, for real though, you know your music video pooped when my video critiquing it ratioed you with double the likes. Yo, what's going on YouTube, it's Ivan Steph, and you guys, I'm back with another video about Jojo Siwa and her messy entrance into the music world. When influencers attempt to make music, they receive a lot of criticism, oftentimes because they think their fame and money voids the need of any skill or talent. And knowledge, because Jojo Siwa really copied Kiss, but it seems like she didn't even know who Gene Simmons is. I'm getting like a like a sexy glam Gene Simmons sea creature. Whoa! <laughs> You know, the amount of references that people have told me I look like in this video that I have no clue what they are is <laughs> sickening. <laughs> I'm adding that one to the list. Now, Jojo Siwa, she's been receiving a lot of hate for quote unquote stealing karma. Now, as it turns out, Jojo did not steal Karma because she actually bought the rights to the song. She was on the Call Her Daddy podcast where she said that she was pitched Karma. Two years ago is when I started writing new music. I we started off like pretty, pretty calm. Like okay. nothing like... Nothing like what's out right now. Pretty calm, yes. Hold up, what is going on with that hat? Looking like my grandma's curtains. Honestly though, that thing must be great for those summer nights when there's a whole lot of mosquitoes. But jokes aside, the interview is weird because she talks about how two years ago she started writing music and then says this. Two years ago is when I started writing new music. I got pitched this song, Karma. Now while I can't find any clips of her actually saying that she wrote Karma, the greatest lie is not that of a lie because she's been very misleading in the way that she's been talking about this song and just music in general. Honestly. I, I, I wrote this rap song called The Lies Sound Better. Ooh. So sick, but I just can't do it yet. You know, that's gonna be another era that we're waiting on in the future. I told my I told my uh, writer, I was like, look. What? Oh no, Jojo, you said you wrote the song, but then you said my writer, so which one is it? Jojo was recently on Ellen where she was rapping, and after hearing that, Eminem must be shaking, and not for the right reasons. Eat your veggies, do your math, eat your homework, that's not my words, get all your chores done. So much fun. But in regards to Karma, she did an interview with Billboard and you literally have this section, which is called the songwriting. We uh, we did some versions of the song. You know, we did a version where it was, you were a bad girl, you did some bad things. And then we did, she was a bad girl, she did some bad things. We tried all the versions and then nothing was as strong as I was a bad girl. I was a bad girl. I did some bad things. Bro, what? Brit Smith version had the exact same words. I was a bad so what do you want about talking about the songwriting when you didn't even change a single word? What I find funny about this is that how are you gonna claim to be starting a genre when your debut song for the genre is basically a cover? I said I wanted to start a new genre of music and they said what do you mean? And I said well it's called gay pop. <laughs> and they were like, and even then, Jojo Siwa isn't the first openly gay person to be making this type of music. Now, since making that comment, Jojo Siwa has received a lot of backlash. I feel like Jojo Siwa thinks that she's like the first ever gay person. Think about the level of delusion it takes to think that you're inventing gay pop. So, because of all the backlash, Jojo went back on what she said, but y'all gotta take a listen to this. Madonna, Lady Gaga, Michael Jackson, there's so many people who have made gay pop. Michael Jackson, gay pop, what? If y'all know the allegations, then you know JoJo saying Michael Jackson is a terrible thing. The Karma music video is actually more my baby than the Karma song itself. I am a super visual person, I'm a super visual artist. Well, that's clear because you didn't even write the lyrics for Karma. Actually, to be fair, credit must be given where credit is due because I guess you could say JoJo technically changed messed around to effed around. Wow, we are witnessing the beginning of a true lyrical genius. So moving on, on, Jojo's been receiving even more hate because she allegedly stole another song. Here's Jojo's song as played in some type of event that she held. <laughs> and here's the original that was teased in a TikTok in 2021. So the song is called Choose Your Fighter and was originally made back in 2021 by an artist named Emmeline. And Jojo's been receiving a lot of hate by people saying that she stole the song. And because of all the hate, she did address this and Karma in a recent interview by TMZ. Why not that instead of a new song? No, there's that's a very normal thing. A lot of songs are, are, are okay. what happens is people write songs and then they just don't do anything with them. 
and then a few years later it makes more sense for another artist. Okay, look, I've seen comments of people saying that many artists don't write their own songs, but we shouldn't be normalizing this. Personally, I grew up listening to rock, which is real music. They play the instruments, they sing, and they actually write their own lyrics. Art is supposed to come from the heart. It's supposed to be meaningful to you, but buying a song that someone else wrote is no different than having AI write a song for you. And even outside of rock, many artists are known for writing their own music and are respected for it, such as Billie Eilish, Ed Sheeran, Eminem, and Lord. And don't get me wrong, it's completely fine to have co-writers and people helping you out, but buying a song that someone else wrote and then taking it on to be your own, if anything, you're a con artist, but you're not a real artist. Now, I want you to see this next part of JoJo's interview with TMZ, where she's asked about the origins of karma. Was it originally Miley's? I don't know. You don't know. You do know. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Did you steal it from Brit Smith? I did not steal anything. <laughs> There's no such thing as stealing. Huh? I also don't know who Brit Smith is. <laughs> <laughs> really? You don't know who Brit Smith is? Look, before JoJo, I didn't know who Brit Smith was, but I'm not the one who bought the song. It just goes to show how spoon-fed JoJo is when she doesn't even know where the song came from or who she bought it from. The song was originally intended for Miley until it was passed on to Brit Smith, who recorded a music video but never released it. JoJo thinks that all it takes to be successful is having fame and money. Now, what I find ironic about JoJo not knowing who Brit Smith is is that after thousands of people asked Brit to release her version of Karma, she finally did and it's actually doing better than JoJo's version. It's honestly pretty funny because at the time I'm looking, Brit Smith's version is ranked number five and JoJo's isn't even in the top 100. If she didn't know who Brit Smith is, then she's gonna know her now. Uh, the one, uh, Choose Your Fighter, one of my other songs. But no, that's the same situation. Somebody else did write it. I did not write the song. And then, You got the rights to it. But I have the rights to it. Same, same thing. <laughs> I got a really good team of lawyers. Jojo, it takes more than a good group of lawyers to make you successful in the music industry. And look, don't be mistaken, I'm not saying this to hate on Jojo. In terms of marketing, her and her team are a genius and the views that she's been getting is evident of that. But the key here is that she needs to translate these viewers into supporters who will stick with their music. There's so many influencers who think that having money makes them an artist. Y'all remember Danielle Cohn, the one who got hate for telling a Spanish speaking person to go back to their own country and then try to get out of the hate by saying they're about 5% Spanish and started making Spanish music. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna listen to a 13 year old. Nah, shut up. <laughs> yes, she really said the male queen. Nice. Anyways, this is a perfect example because she was getting a lot of criticism and at the time was getting a lot of views, but eventually people got bored and then her music flopped. Because people weren't watching her music because she was skilled or talented, but instead because she was a laughing stock. Now there are some influencers who I think are doing a great job, such as Jaden and Nessa Barrett. If Jojo wants to be successful in this music career that she's attending to build, then she needs to fix this image because evident by the amount of dislikes compared to likes on her music video, it's not working. There's a lot of controversy and a lot of hate going on. And even Jojo admitted that all this drama is making her marketing successful. I am giving the world art and they might not like it. They might hate it, but they're enjoying it. Mm. And it's become a bit of a guilty pleasure for everyone. Karma makes you listen. Karma makes you ask. Karma makes you confused. And so whether people like it or not, Marketing plan works. But the thing about negative exposure is that people will get bored until you realize your music career is dead. So I want to transition and summarize an article that was posted by the Rolling Stone where a former ex-OMG pop member, Leah Sanderson, along with her mother, came forward and revealed the dark side of Jojo Siwa. In fact, this article was published in February and a lot of people are saying that Jojo's rebrand is a cover up to take away attention from the allegation that she and her mother are facing. So ex-OMG pop is a girl group that was created in 2021 by Jojo Siwa and her mother. You can kind of think of it like kids bop. And this is Leah Sanderson, a 16 year old born with spina bifida, a birth defect in which the spinal cord fails to properly form. She spent a lot of her early years in the hospital undergoing dozens of surgery and she still regularly struggles with pain and bladder infections. She was a longtime fan of Jojo and was super thrilled to be selected to be part of the group but unfortunately things did not go as she hoped. In an article published by the Rolling Stone, Leah and her mother came forward and revealed the dark truth about Jojo Siwa and her mother Jessalyn Siwa. Leah and her mother alleged verbal abuse claiming that Jojo's mom Jessalyn was cruel to the young members calling them names and even shaming one for having a disability. They said that Jojo was nasty and domineering, which was very different from her persona seen on social media. Apparently, she screamed insults at the girls during a performance, alleged that she played a role in helping build a cutthroat environment long after the cameras were gone, playing favorites, and pitting members against each other. The former members alleged that they had to pay out of pocket for group related food and transportation and were not paid for individual music video, photo, or social media shoots. But that's the least.
least of my concern because apparently some of the producers on the XOMG pop audition reality show called Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution said it's not a good day unless you make a kid cry. Bro, what in the Nickelodeon is this? Like who says that? It's not a good day unless you make a kid cry. Wow. And after I read how they treated Leah, it's believable that the kids on this show were put through harsh treatment. So in late 2022, Leah experienced a slew of health problems that were related to her disability, including blood leaking from her belly button. And get this, even though blood was coming from her literal belly button, JoJo's mom, rather than telling her to sit down and take a break, told her to put a maxi pad on it so blood wouldn't leak onto the costume. I'm no doctor, but bleeding through your belly button can't be good. I know that the saying is the show must go on, but that's crazy. And it gets even worse because that December, Leah got spinal surgery and only a few weeks later, JoJo's mom told her that she has to head back to rehearsal in order to practice for the Disco Believer music video. Bro, I don't know much about JoJo's mother, but what is it with all these influencers' mothers being absolute control freaks and forcing children to do the absolute most for content? Y'all can read the full article for yourself, but I wanted to bring some attention to this and summarize the article because I think it is something important that's being undershadowed by Jojo's rebrand and her music. Anyway guys, that's officially gonna do it for this video. If you were entertained, please consider leaving a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, I wanna know your thoughts about all this, so leave a comment and let me know your thoughts about Jojo's rebrand, the music, and all of the drama that's been going on. Also, we are getting really close to 100,000 subscribers. My channel has recently blew up because of all this Jojo Siva covers that I've been doing, so if you're a new subscriber here or new viewer, if you're watching my video for the first time, I just want to say thank you. Thank you really for being here. I've had comments such as this one here. They do make me tear up a bit. And seeing that you guys actually enjoy my content, see potential in me, those comments mean the most. And I just want to thank you all so much for the support. But anyway, guys, that's a fish we're going to do it. So until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace.